Hey guys, welcome to the Drawing Room Experts. This is Abe. Uh, we're back with another football uh, episode, and this one, um, this one's kind of a tricky one. Um, I'm I'm fairly emotional whenever talking about Liverpool specifically, you know, and I've made no qualms and 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 secret about uh, my 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 affection and love for the club. Um, and you, you, this this might feel very ridiculous for some people, um, especially who don't watch football, uh, uh, to hear me uh, vent and almost borderline complain about what's going on at the club when I have been nothing short of praising the the, the club and the team uh, in all of my previous episodes. And um, e- e- even the episode where uh, which I recorded right after we lost uh, to Villa earlier this season, 7-2, um, and little did I know that that was that was a, a a marker for things to come this season. But um, but regardless of that, I think I think this there needs to be a little bit of discussion. I think more importantly for me to really organize my thoughts and organize my feelings about the club and the team right now, it's very important for me to just let it out and talk about it. And um, initially, I thought to to record this um, last week, um, and. Um, interestingly, we we were in a like we won against um, um, uh, we won against who, who do we play in the Champions League? I, I'm 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 first flipping. I think it was let's see Leipzig. Yes, so we played Leipzig in the Champions League, and then we won against uh, Sheffield um, after. The, that I think maybe maybe a gap in between in terms of uh, us winning anything, but there were a couple of wins there, and I was I didn't feel as intensely uh, as I did when I was thinking of recording the episode. But um, when those two wins happened, I I felt like it will probably sound outdated. But then, especially yesterday when we lost against Chelsea, and I saw the game on and off, um, middle of work. I had so many observations and so many frustrations that have been recurring, especially this season with this team. Um, so let's just go over a little bit of a summary of of, uh, of how our season has been so far. We're lying on seventh place right now, four points off of the, the top four with, um, I think, um, and we have two teams above us, Everton and West Ham, who have played a game less. And there are already uh, two points, uh, three points and two points ahead of us. So that's obviously, you know, I'm, I'll have to assume they're going to win their game in hand. So that's going to increase the gap between us and um, and Everton to, uh, fuck, six points. Oh, that's going to be bad. And West Ham to five points. Um, and, and Chelsea, who are currently fourth to... Fi- uh, to four points. And then my biggest concern right now that we have Spurs and Aston Villa, both of them are eighth and ninth right now. And uh, Spurs have uh, one game in hand. So potentially they could, um, they could win that game and, um, and go two points ahead of us. So that brings us down to eighth. And then we have Villa who have two games in hand right now uh, on us. And they are four points behind us. So if they win both of those two games in hand, um, they are looking at how many points? So four, six. So they're 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 going to be at two points ahead of us. So that will leave us at ninth. Yeah, ninth um, as the champions of England especially when we won the league by like 20 odd points or something like that last year. So to, uh, to really come to this position, 27 games played uh, by each side and assuming the, 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 the teams who have their games in hand will win their games. We are going to be um, four points off of uh, the top four. And um Actually, six points off the top four. If if uh, if Everton win their game in hand, um, six points the top four, um, and lying on ninth. So this is kind of like Arsenal level shit that we're looking at. 
Um, we have lost five home games on the trot. I don't even know. And I don't even want to get into the history of when was the last time we did that. I'm pretty sure it's like centuries ago. Um, and this, again, after our team has been on a winning streak of about 60-odd games uh, f- spanning over four years of not losing a home game in the Premier League. Um, and now we have lost five uh, on the trot. So that's where we currently stand. Now, you, someone who, who doesn't really watch football and is trying to marry the two here, one being, you know, one of my previous episodes when I declared, you know, how happy, how happy I was when, when Liverpool won the league, to now when they're listening to me and saying, what, now they're ninth in the next season? What the hell happened? Um, I wish I could explain, but there's been, uh, I think, a variety of reasons, and I wouldn't really jump to um, jump to the whole injury, you know, bullshit that you know Klopp goes on and on about um, uh, right off the bat. I think that is obviously a a factor, but then other factors like uh, you know COVID, league being like matches squirmed into like small. Um, uh, like playing four games in a week or something like that because they want they started this like we, we started the season late uh, in uh, mid September and by mid September all of the teams have usually played like four or five games so um, we've already like five games behind and um, we have to finish the league by May so obviously there's going to be every team who's going to be playing more games on the trot. Um, and, and initially, you know, we did pretty well. We were like potentially five points. We, we were playing a game against, I don't know, maybe West Brom at home. I think that's where our blip started uh, against uh, fucking Allardyce, who, whose first game for West Ham was against us. And he hasn't, he has probably won just one or two games since. Uh, he didn't win against it. He, was, he drew the game um, 1-1. And that was in December, late December or mid-December. And had we won that game, we would have been five points clear at the, at the top of the table. So to lose that advantage, then not just keep losing advantage, but just keep going through this blip, which was unprecedented in my opinion, that from five points, potentially going five points clear at the top of the table, now we're like, how many points? We're like, um, oh, fuck me. We're, we're um, 22 points off the top of the table, 22 points. Wow, I just I just read that myself and uh, I'm beyond shocked. So um, from being five points or almost potentially five points clear at the top of the table, we're like now 22 points behind Man City who have been winning fifth, who won 20 games on the row. Um, obviously they had to, they had to do that. Um, And Man City, by the way, they didn't have a good start of the season. At one point, they were like 15th or 16th or like like beyond the 10th spot. And they were well and truly over in terms of like the the race for the title. And at that point, I remember Spurs were being contended as one. Liverpool, obviously, as champions, they were always in contention. And then nobody else, maybe Leicester was spoken about here and there. Man Man United, you know, were, were there or thereabouts, but they were never considered favorites for the title and for them to just you know pick up and 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 win everything um out of nowhere and come and be at the top of the table it's insane um whatever the reason might be like you know uh, money and and whatnot but still the the fact is that they um they are at the top of the league so there, this is where we are um um, one of the reasons why this is this has been the case is is obviously injuries, and I'm not going to uh, put everything on injuries, but but it is a significant factor. We lost the best defender in the world at the moment, uh, Virgil Van Dijk, um, at, at the back of the uh, the Everton game, or um, right after with a game which we could have won. By the way, we should have won uh, um, um, if 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 it only were if it were not for a uh, VAR. Um, and that's when I did the last Premier League episode, if I, rem- if I rem- remember correctly, uh, speaking about how VAR screwed us up. Um, and VAR had, has had a say on our, you know, um, uh, in our games uh, this season. 
And that hasn't helped us either. I mean, there have been in situations where we have had stupid goals uh, uh, given against us, stupid goals that were chalked off or marginal offside. And that is fine now because it's kind of consistent across the board, but still that doesn't mean it's not stupid anymore. I mean, the whole offside, if I'm remembering correctly, from of, of Mane against uh, against Everton away uh, when when Virgil got injured, was beyond insanity, as if they were looking to cancel the goal. Um, it was that stupid. Um, but yeah, VAR being one of the reasons, the game coming thick and fast being another reason, and injuries, as I mentioned. We lost Virgil van Dijk. We lost uh, uh, Joe Gomez, you know, who's... Uh, who's um, uh, his partner. And then we, we, uh, we lost briefly, we lost um, uh, Trent Alexander Arnold and we lost um, um, uh, Allison at the start of the season as well, briefly for a few games. And then now we were without uh, Henderson, but we're, we're without um, Fabinho and, um, and it has been absolutely unprecedented in, in terms of the injuries, the number of injuries we've seen. Um, what I don't really understand, though, is is uh, is Klopp's demeanor during this time. And before I go on and, and really lay it on him, uh, let me just be very, very clear. I'm Klopp in. I'm never going to be Klopp out until, I don't know, I, I can't even imagine things going that bad that I'll be Klopp out. Klopp is in always for me. So uh, this is not going to be this is not this shouldn't come across as me trying to say the clop out that's ridiculous stupid and I'll come to that uh, towards the end of the the episode but uh, I'm definitely clop in but the 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 idea of him uh, um, almost self pitying uh, pitying uh, himself and the team due to injuries and due to wrong decisions and due to VAR and all of that. It, it looked kind of cute at, at the start and valid, but now it has it is becoming really, really boring for me. I think, yes, we have injuries. Yes, VAR has had a say in our results, but come on. That's just, these are stuff that is beyond our control. So he, should, he shouldn't be coming out in the media, number one, blaming and complaining about the fixtures. There was a time he had that uh, famous um, falling... Um, um, walling out with uh, a journalist uh, when they were interviewing him and he was adamant that the media, you know, the broadcasting um, industry is, is kind of behind why his players are getting injured and, 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 and all of that shit. Um, although, you know, I have, may have a different opinion and may, I may or may not agree with Klopp on, on that, but that's beyond the point right now. The, 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 the idea is that that agitation, you know, it, it, it looks, it reflects, and 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 even that is okay. You can be agitated, you can be, you know, fucked up in the media. You can do whatever you want, but I have a problem if that really seeps into how our players play. And I'm hoping that it's not the case because, um, and it's hard to believe that it isn't because Klopp's personality rules supreme, reigns supreme over that team. So if the Klopp's frustrated and if Klopp's in a self pitying mode. I think that's going to show up uh, and rub off, uh, uh, you know, on on the team. Um, we're not an experienced team. Um, we don't have, um, you know, huge characters who've won it all, right? We've just started to win, right? So um, for that team to be in a difficult spot, you need someone like Klopp to really keep his head. And I've I'm, I'm, I've been really really sad that he hasn't been able to do so um the blame gaming you know the self-pitying is is so uh, predictable and and dull now that i i'm actually losing interest in in watching Klopp's uh uh post-match uh interviews because it's just becoming a tad embarrassing embarrassing for me um but pre-january um when the transfer window opened and we bought a couple of defenders due to obvious reasons, um, I could have understood what our team was looking like. And it was like only the start of that blip. And I could be, I could have some sympathies for the way we played and we lost games and all of that stuff. But post buying players and recognizing that we needed players, 
I'm kind of losing it, and I'm pretty much on uh, the the Jamie Carragher boat, who who's who's not buying all of this bullshit around injuries anymore because our problem hasn't been particularly around defense. I know we've lost so many defenders at the back, and we're playing at the makeshift like midfielders in defense. But to be honest, it hasn't been just that. I don't think we've been like if you look at our games, our possession has always been good in all of these games. So we're definitely keeping the ball. So if we're keeping the ball, we, we should be creating, we should be doing more with it as opposed to uh, complaining about how bad our defense is. Because if we weren't keeping the ball and the other team was, we, I could under, I could, I could relate and be sympathetic about that. Hey, you know, it's a makeshift defense. It's constantly under pressure by these 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 traveling teams or you know home teams that we play against. Um, and because we have a makeshift defense, it it makes sense that they concede a few goals. But it hasn't been the case. We we do concede, yes. We've had issues with the goalkeeper too. I mean, Allison out of nowhere is now looking like fucking uh, Roy Carroll. Um, um, and that's also that's that's almost you know unprecedented. At um, you don't have the world's best keeper go from being the world's best keeper to being absolutely ridiculous and very uh, anxious. I get anxious when I uh, when I see him on the ball. Um. Um, so, so it, it, it isn't about defense. I think it, it has to be, it has to be talked about, uh, the, the attack has to be talked about, uh, Mane, Salah, um, and Firmino have done fuck all. Maybe Salah, you can probably suggest that, you know, he's the top scorer in the league right now. He's so, you know, you can give him less flack, but, Mane and Firmino, for sure. I need like they need to pick up their game and 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 fast. And yesterday, it's that urgent now. But um, what I feel like is, you know, it's important to I think if if I pause right here, it's important to understand how that Liverpool team functioned. Um, we were the best team in England in Europe. For a reason, because it was a well, uh, it, it was a well-oiled machine. Uh, everybody knew their roles. It was just everything was so perfectly put into uh, you know place in that starting eleven, especially that it was just there's no other way that you couldn't really include anybody else apart for those players because it was they were all critical to the way how we played. And the biggest criticality of the way how we played, in my opinion, is. Um, um, is uh, is our midfield and the midfield of Fabinho at number six, Henderson and Vinaldum. You know these three were doing the legwork. They were doing everything: chasing, going back, defending, attacking, feeding the um, um, the wingbacks to feed the attackers. So they were they were the diamond. You know. Um, not literally by formation, but they were the diamond around, you know, these, these brilliant players that we had. So the moment that got disrupted, that got disjointed is, is where I feel like we lost it. We, we lost, as I, as I said, we lost uh, Van Dyke. So Fabinho had to drop back and then we lost Joe Gomez. Then Henderson had to drop back. Then we tried a few young defenders here and there. Henderson, you know, with one, with one of them, Fabinho with the other. So it was always alternating between, uh, you know, um, these two midfielders and a defender and a young defender, and that automatically broke uh, broke the the consistently consistency or the machinery that was our midfield. We introduced Thiago, who hasn't wasn't fuck all so far um and i don't honestly i don't blame him and i'm gonna cut him some slack because it's his first time in the league and you know these things may happen but i also don't feel feel like he's i don't think he's playing in the right position i don't think he's number six i don't think he he cannot play in place of uh, henderson and fab he can't play in both of these positions he has to play a little advance up the pitch right behind uh or with Bobby Firmino um, uh, as almost like a number 10 uh, or a number eight at least, but he can't really play that number six role, although that's his number on, on, on his shirt, not, not his actual position in this team, in my opinion. 
So once that that machinery got broken, you know, the attack didn't function. The defense obviously wasn't functioning at all. Um, everything just uh, flew apart, um, and um, and that's you know been the biggest issue. And I, you know, like I said, I could understand that pre us buying two defenders, because you could say that we were running out of defenders. Even then, you can argue that you know those two young players, they probably could have played in 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 the defense and really uh, have Fabinho really protecting them up front. Uh, maybe just do it a little more actively as opposed to when when Dyke was playing. But he could still be in midfield. Um, those two defenders would have done a decent job, I think. You know, maybe you can argue Reese Williams may maybe too young and too mature for that role, but but still, okay, you you can forget that. But ever since we bought two defenders, I just don't understand this persistence of Klopp playing a midfielder in defense. Just play those fucking two two defenders. They should be good enough. They were playing football prior to coming to the club. So they're not youngsters or lacking experience. Yes, they might be lacking experience in the Premier League level. Um, um, and I can get an argument around him trying to uh, ease them in. But it's not working. As Gary Neville rightfully said a couple of weeks ago, something has to change. You have to try something else. You can't keep com- continuing with the same strategy when it's clearly not, and, and, you know, it's not working. Uh, uh, Thiago in the midfield is not working right now. He needs a, 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 a you know a Henderson or Fabinho in midfield to help him so he can go up the field and and try and make something happen there in the number ten position. But um, it, it it is beyond me, and and you know I'm not gonna suggest that I know better than Klopp. Uh, of course I don't, but. I think there has to be another way. There has to be another way to actually, because we're conceding, con- conceding goals as is. We're looking shaky at the back as is. So if we introduce two young defenders at the back, it's probably not going to get any worse than what it, al- it already is. But what it may do is really strengthen the attack. So when we have the ball, which it has been the case that we keep the ball really well, um, um, in all of our games that we've lost, we've kept the ball, but just hasn't just just have not scored. So if we're keeping the ball, I think having midfielders play in the midfield would really, you know, would, would probably may help us help click things uh, in attack. Um, but that shouldn't be hiding the fact that we have the top three or the front three really not clicking at all. I think that is also an issue that needs to be addressed. But I think we need to help them uh, as opposed to expecting the top three front three to help us. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I think, I think something has to change, bring in defenders, albeit young defenders, so just bring them in. I think Nat Phillips is competent enough to really play there by himself. He doesn't require a babysitter like Henderson or Fabinho to help him play in that, in that defense. Um, if it was Reese Williams, I could have said, yeah, you probably need an experienced person with him, not a defender, but a person with him. But with uh, uh, Kabak and and Ben Davies that we've bought uh, over um, in 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 January, I think it's now time to use those uh, those two and bring in Fabinho at that you know as prized number six position, and then play Thiago up more advanced up the field, so that he can help. Bobby Firmino and, you know, Mane and Salah and, and hopefully, you know, score some goals. Um, but even with uh, Firmino, I think he should probably sit on the bench. I think now we have, now that we have Jota back, who was in supreme and sublime form before he got injured, which again, another fucking injury at the wrong time, right? Um, um, I think now that he's back, we can probably... Uh, ease him into the starting eleven, and he can probably do wonders against uh chelsea yesterday i think he looked really good really active he dribbles very you know very well he's really good on the ball so i think we can definitely use that up front <sighs> my expectations i mean i'm just gonna open you know our 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 fixtures coming up um um we play fulham on sunday Fucking 6 a.m. 
shit, I have an early morning again. Um, and then we have Leipzig at home. Oh, swear to God, we need to really move forward in the Champions League because Champions League now is becoming really a prized possession, especially now that top four is looking bleaker by the day. And then we play fucking Wolves away, which is again a potentially banana skin, if you want to call it that. It's it's a difficult away game. Um, and who else? We we go oh, fuck me. Arsenal next. Um, Villa at home. Leeds away. Newcastle United. Manchester United. Uh, Southampton. Uh, West Brom, which I'll be in. Burnley, and then finally um, Crystal Palace. We don't. We're running out of games. We need to win against Fulham. Uh, we need to beat. Need, I mean, these are all winnable games, uh, barring the Arsenal one. Probably in the next few games, uh, we have to win. Aston Villa at home will be fucking critical, um, uh, uh, and and also United away will be fucking critical as well. So. Yeah, and then we need to move forward in the Champions League, beat Leipzig and whoever comes in. I think we need to really treat Champions League in a separate uh, um, light because we've done reasonably well in the Champions League this year. So I hope we can keep that confidence in the Champions League uh, when we play. Um, And finally, I think uh, a a word of advice to these uh, fans that we have these days, uh, especially after the you know Champions League win and the league win, they've become more and more vocal about how great this team is. And I've been seeing on Twitter, especially you know these fans losing their shit because now we're starting to lose games. Um, and I've even heard some of them say "clop out," which is I don't even want to get uh, you know go there. It's so beyond it, it is beyond comprehension how stupid one can be to say that. But I think. Um, as a fan myself, I've been supporting the club uh, for a good number of years, 15 plus years, and um, um, I've seen worse times. I've seen fucking Roy Hodgson at the club. I've seen where 7th, 8th, ninth was normal for this club uh, in terms of our standing in the league. We weren't making top four. We were out of the Champions League for years and years. We weren't doing really well in any of the European competition. Fuck it. Like, we can't even win, like, fucking FA Cup uh, or, 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 you know, the Carling Cup, uh, which is now, I think, the Carboa Cup. So we were losing games left, right, and center. We were a shadow of a team that was, you know, when Rafa was at his peak. So I've seen that time. And and although you know us losing five games on the on the trot at home is unprecedented and maybe things weren't even worse during that time, but I've seen bad times with this club, and um, regardless of whether you agree with it or not, I think the situation that we find ourselves in, where you know our number one keeper just forgets how to be a keeper in the middle of a game, uh, whether you know. We have all of the defenders in the club getting injured in one season. Uh, whether we have the front three just forgetting how to score goals altogether. Whether we have the likes of Thiago, who when we bought was a fantastic preposition for us in the team, um, who hasn't really done anything. So these are all really rare things. If you were to uh, put you know, put, put out odds for all of these instances to occur in one season, you can only imagine what those odds would look like. So um, you can disagree with it. You can disagree with it. I can have so many things to say about it, but the fact remains that these are very, you know, unique circumstances. Um, so I wouldn't really jump the gun. I mean, as new fans, I know these, these fans are fairly new and young and you haven't probably seen the worst times that I did. Uh, in the late 2000s and the you know earlier um, in the last decade, um, it, like even even when Klopp started, it wasn't all you know rosy when he when he started out. We still finished I think seventh or eighth in his first season and sixth in his second season or something like that. So um, things things have been you know uh, been bad before. But we've gone out. Of, we've come out of it uh, really, really strong. So I think the important thing is to really trust who we have um, um, at the realm, which is Klopp and FSG. I have full support 
Um, but I think it is also imperative that Klopp needs to really figure out how he's dealing with this 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 uh, unique circumstances that he finds himself in. And um, and and um, I know I think I read somewhere he said that you know he hasn't really faced these kind of times before, and and he's becoming a better manager as a result of it, which is fine, great. But someone in his in his backroom team has to really you know help him. Um, Hopefully the players help him. Um, um, I'm already like worrying the worst for next season in terms of where we're going to finish this year. We may, we might not even see Champions League football next year, which is going to be absolutely insane uh, for a club to go from Champions League winners to Premier League winners to not playing in the Champions League in a matter of three years. That's going to be really a tough pill to swallow, but Regardless of that, you know, we shall see. I think this team may have hit the rock bottom at the right time. As much, you know, as bizarre it may sound, but I think we still have, I mean, 27 games, so we have about uh, 11 games. If we can go on some sort of a run, like win all these 11 games, and it's not unprecedented, we've done that before. Um, just you know, a couple of years ago. So, if we go on that winning run, we just need some luck as well. So, if we go on that winning run, you know, the, those are those are thirty three valuable points, and who knows where that might end us? Uh, you know, uh, by um, that might take us, and um, we're still like six points potentially off the top four, which is not bad, which is not um alarming or, 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 you know, something that cannot be overcome. Uh, these other teams will lose games and draw games and draw points. So we just need to be there to capitalize. So, um, yeah, that's been my Liverpool update for, for you guys and, um, uh, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. And if you're listening to audio podcast, um, uh, do give us a rating on, um, Apple and, uh, you know, subscribe us on on spotify as well and now that spotify is open in pakistan you know feel free to check us out on spotify on google podcast apple podcast what have you and uh, leave us your comments on youtube and we'll be back with another one thank you